morning, everybody. We've been reviewing the 2020 year. We've done memes, and we did, unfortunately, the people that passed away. And today, we're going to be doing TV shows, right? Yep. And since I know nothing about TV, why not have the film history teacher here? Or, and TV history. I teach them both. Yeah. So we have seen a couple. So let's. we're going to start off with the one we've... I haven't watched really anything on Hulu. I've watched other shows on Hulu, but not Hulu brands. But I believe Olivia's seen a couple episodes. So, Olivia, which one of those series have you seen? I've seen The Handmaid's Tale, and I've watched only a couple episodes, but it's been really good so far, and I plan on finishing it. Syracuse restaurants closed in an orange zone are begging Governor Cuomo to let them reopen. Since late November, restaurants in the city of Syracuse and some parts of DeWitt have not been allowed to serve customers indoors and have been forced to run their businesses from takeout and outdoor dining. Many restaurant owners finding these new COVID restrictions unfair. Other restaurants not located in the city of Syracuse or DeWitt are allowed to serve up to four people at a table indoors if they're in a yellow zone and 12 people if they're not in any zone at all. Chris Bailey, owner of the Original Grain and Exo Taco, is currently working with seven downtown restaurants to send letters to state lawmakers in Cuomo, demanding to be freed from the orange zone. As part of this campaign, the Rise and Shine Diner sent not only letters to Cuomo, but attached them to a basket of oranges to remind him of the struggling businesses that remain shut down. While many people have been charged with a variety of crimes relating to the events surrounding the Capitol, federal prosecutors are now adding more serious crimes as more information is coming forward. For instance, most recently, a retired Air Force officer, Lieutenant Colonel Lan Larry Randall Brock Jr., who was a part of the insurrection at the Capitol building last week, brought plastic zip tie handcuffs with him because he intended to take hostages, according to a Texas prosecutor. He was arrested Sunday in Texas after being photographed on the Senate floor wearing a helmet and vest carrying the makesh makeshift handcuffs. Magistrate Judge Jeffrey L. Kierton ordered Brock to surrender any firearms and limit his access to the internet. The YMCA of Central New York has changed its name or a popular day camp due to misappropriated culture. Camp Iroquois held in, manu held in manulus, Manlius every summer since 1933 has been renamed Lake Evergreen. Hogwarts Legacy, an action RPG set in the Harry Potter universe has been delayed and released to 2022. The team of people working on the game needed more time, and so Warner Brothers has postponed the release date. The game will be released on PS4, PS5, PC, Xbox, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, all right, so I think the, uh, Honor, the National Honor Society is having a blood drive on the 29th. So if you are interested, ask somebody who's an officer of uh, National Honor Society or get involved with um, Mr. Mussolino. He can answer those questions as well. So we are going to talk about, let's see. Oh, I have more information. It's just arriving right now to us. There we go. Um, it's the 29th. 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the Hall of Fame. The need for blood is at an all-time high, and they're really excited if you have the COVID antibodies. So those are things that we are looking for. Um, to register, redcrossblood.org, and use the sponsor code ESMHS to find the drive. All right, so you didn't see any of those Hulu shows? No. All right, so let's move on to our next series of shows, Apple Plus. Have you seen any of those? I have not, but I have been looking forward to watching The Morning Show. I haven't gotten the time to look at that yet. All right, so if you look at The Morning Show, I was completely surprised how um, in, it's, it's a drama. And it really is, uh, deals with the Me Too movement. I enjoyed it, but I was really surprised by um, Steve Carell. You usually see him as a comedian. Yeah, and when I saw him in the trailers, I thought it was going to be a comedy, but... Right, but it does show, no. I mean, since you work on a morning show, it does show the behind the scenes. The other one I saw on this was Ted Lasso. Uh, the most enjoyable show I've probably seen this year because it's basically a comedy that never makes you worry. Some shows always, like, make you worry, like they overheard something or there's some kind of problem. And Ted Lasso just shakes it all off yeah. and keeps going. 
And if you don't know Ted Lasso, that he is a United States college football coach who ends up going overseas to coach a soccer team. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> a different type of football. All right, we got one more. Um, these are the top shows of 2020. Amazon Prime. Any of those? No. I got one on, I want to see. The Boys is something I want to see. I believe that's superheroes that use their powers uh, for bad. Uh -huh. um, or not so good. The Marvelous Miss, Mrs. Maisel, that was season three that just came out. And that that's a nice set piece comedy. And The Hunters, I was mesmerized by that early in the pandemic this year. Uh, great cast as they go to hunt down um, former Nazi uh, concentration camp soldiers in the United States. I'm so, surprised Jack Ryan isn't on the top five. Did it have a new season this year? I think they did, but I haven't gotten around to watch the new season yet. All right, I did. I, it might have been at the end of 2019. Good question. Anyway, let's, uh, we're going to have a seven-day forecast for you for our weather. You know what that means? Golfing. Golfing, yes. I will probably go golfing today. It'll be dark, but I can play a couple holes. So, all right, moving on with the top shows of 2020, we're going to check out a couple other uh, streaming sites. Disney Plus, come on. Okay, I've seen some of The Mandalorian. Some of. Yeah, I haven't watched all of it. Did you call any of the characters Boba Fett or Yoda? Because if you have, you're going to make certain people upset. Like... I've called Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda. Okay. All right. So I, The Mandalorian was great, and that's on that list, it's the only thing that I've seen from Disney+. Plus. So. Yeah. All right. I think, what do we got next? We, I think that was it. We got Netflix that's going to come up after sports. So I'm, we're going to ask um, Tanner. I think Tanner is a big fan of fantasy, and the reason why I say that is, is the playoffs have started, and he's still wearing Pittsburgh Steelers stuff. So, any top shows out there that you have enjoyed this year, Tanner? Well, uh... One show that I have particularly enjoyed watching was The Last Dance. The uh documentary about Michael Jordan and the six rings he won with the Chicago Bulls after, before he retired and after he retired. So, in sports news today, last night in the NFL, two coaching vacancy jobs were filled as the Jacksonville Jaguars and the, Ohio, and the former Ohio State Buckeyes head coach Urban Meyer, had, they have agreed to have agreed on a deal to make Urban Meyer the head coach of the Jaguars. And last night, the New York Jets found their replacement for Adam Gates as 49ers Defense, defensive coordinator Robert Sale has agreed to, to be the new head coach of the team. Recently, about 37 minutes ago, John Rosso from the MLB has announced that hopefully today the uh, New York Yankees and J DJ LeMahieu will sign an agreement on a new deal. And I'm Tanner with Sports. Nice recovery with the last dance. The last dance was very good. All right, so... Netflix, more, more people have Netflix. So, all right, Queen's Gambit, relatively new, fabulous show. I've watched the first couple episodes of The Umbrella Academy, but I could not get into it. All right, so, and Ratchet is a nurse. It's based on uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It kind of sets it up. But if you don't know pop culture, and you don't know what the number one show is, and if you haven't seen it, where have you been? Number one, The Tiger King. Yes. I have watched that over quarantine with my parents because nothing else to do. All, and all I can, I, I can only hear uh, Coach Neuhaus saying Carol Baskin. It's, all, it's still <laughs> in my head. Killed yeah. her husband. Whacked him. Yeah. So, 
hopefully you guys enjoyed our 2020 uh, streaming in review. We didn't do TV sh shows, but everything was CBS old people shows yep. in top five. So, all right. Uh, until next week, right? Yep. Have a good weekend, everybody.